So my name is Diego. I was a physicist back in Peru. Now I moved here and now I'm a programmer and I'm at the Recruit Center. And I'm going to use an Emacs package called DemoIt to present inside Emacs. And this is how it looks. How to order salads that, inside Emacs. And a few presentations inside Emacs as well. So those are my things on the internet. And I'll proceed to the scene. So, so when I was in the record center, I have many friends that were joking around like, hey Diego, you really spend a lot of time in Emacs. Like, you know, <laughs> why? And you also go to Sweet Greens a lot to eat. Sweet Greens is a salad place. So it's like, why do you waste so much time going to Sweet Greens if you can just order stuff from inside Emacs, right? Emacs couldn't do everything, right? Have you had that, friends? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I'm going to show you that really Emacs can do most of the stuff. So it was like, how hard can it be? I mean, come on, we know the internet well. So I know Sweden has an order inside, so let's check it. Um, this is how it looks like. You select a restaurant, uh, let's say Nolita, and then you select a menu. You have salads, and then you have pictures of it. You have ingredients and whatnot. So let me introduce you to this thing called uh, the Chrome network thing and which shows you everything about anything. So let's reload the page to see what happens. Um, okay. Cool. So we are not getting all the requests, only the XHR. So that is our object request. And we see that there are many interesting ones. We're just going to go through each of them. So, ha, huh, they have an API. It's just that it's not documented. It's for internal use. This is customer, so I don't, I don't know if we should really care about that. This is for orders, and this is for the restaurant in which you get uh, you know, information about the restaurant, like what's the address, um, how far is it, etc., etc. And this 26 is the ID of the restaurant, and you get all the products that are inside, see? There are like apple, pears, and cheddar salad, or large organic lentil chickpea soup, whatever. And then the menu is also has this thing called, it has salads and soups and beverages. I mean, it's pretty okay for being like a web page, but I'm pretty sure we can do better in Emacs. So let's go ahead and try that. Um, so first we have to like get the auth, right? Authentication, because this web page must have a CSRF token. Actually, funny story, the first time I tried this, they didn't have a CSRF token. That's why I, I used curl to just make requests, but after like three or four days, uh, my request started failing, and it was because they added that, and then it's like, oh. So you just put one obstacle more, you know, it must still can beat it. So I will show you how I made a workaround to it. Um, this is how our authentication function should look like. This Emacs Lisp uh, is, is basically just like any Lisp, but um, if we don't have a username, well, we read from the mini buffer, and if we don't have a password, we'll ask the user for a password. Uh, I'm going to execute this now, and you might be thinking, Diego, you're crazy. Are you going to show us your password? Well, not really, because, you know, Emacs has also this function called read password, which does this pretty cool thing that I'm going to show you. Uh, wait, here. So I execute this in org, and, okay. Oh, huh. Ha, ha, ha. One sec. See, green. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm cool now. Uh, it's asked for a username, right? I'm going to put my email. Then a super secret password. And I, I will type it just without fear because Emacs can hide the password from you so that you don't know my, that my secret, super secret password is I love Vim secretly. <laughs> 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 um, all right, and now, yeah, that's a password. See, sweet green. That's easy. So, so Emacs is secure, but your presentation wasn't. Oh, it is secure. I just put whatever. <laughs> um, okay, intro to request now. Um, this is how the documentation gives it. You know. Okay, who? How many people have worked with JavaScript before? And you hate Calvax when it gets really nested. Don't you, don't you hate Calvax? So this thing basically gives you callbacks when in the success functions and stuff. 
But what I'm trying to do here is trying to have a workflow in which I, ex I first authenticate, then I make the order, then I get the menus, then I get um, my card and whatever, right? So I can't have this without making it too com complex. So just for the showing, I, I will just show you how this looks like. Uh, oh, wait, actually, uh, here. So if I execute this, I get that I sent this key with this value. And the anatomy of this is like, okay, so you have a request thing, then you have the URL, then you have what type of HTTP request it is, then you have data, and you have a parser. The parser will either uh, get the response and pass it through the JSON library that Emacs has, or either just send you a string and, make, and let you do whatever you want with it. And then there is this success function in which you have this, and you, this will get executed once you receive your response from the server. But we don't want that because, as I said, we want it to be very synchronously, like this. Um, well, this why not, but like this. Um, we get a CSRF token by using a let, uh, this, a, a let block here. So check this out. We have a request. Um, can you see this? If you can, let me just here. Okay, so we have a request. We go to the web page of SeedGreens. We have to make it a get. And this thing that was very hard to find in the documentation, this sync thing makes it like, it just uh, it stops Emacs and just doesn't do anything until you get a response, which may sound bad, but it's really just very fast to grab the web page in, in just plain text. So it's not really that bad. And then you have a buffer string, so that means that you get the whole the whole web page as a string. Um, what I did then it was just you know use regular expressions to get out the CSRF token from whatever web page it was, <coughs> from whatever element it was, and then I just set the, the, the CSRF token to whatever it was again. Um, okay, here, cool. Now what about cookie headers? Well, this is the other part of using the request library in which we, okay, can you see this? So now we have to actually log in. So you might be thinking, what, why, why does Emacs, which is a text editor, does all this stuff? And the only answer is that Emacs is really awesome and it lets you like, communicate with web servers as however you want it to be. So you can actually pass in, in, a, in a post message all your uh, customer email and password, and then you can say, uh, yeah, I want to accept JSON, and then I want to, this content I'm sending you is JSON too, so you can get the, the headers of the response, and get the cookies that are being set, and then just just do whatever with it. So when I when I first stumbled with this, I was like, am I really using an editor like it's like more than 20 years old? <laughs> can you imagine any other editor just doing this and you doing this? <laughs> See, is it not amazing? <laughs> it's like why aren't people? Why aren't more people just ordering stuff from inside Emacs? This is plain that easy. Um, it's just the only thing is that you have to get to the, uh, I guess, to the need to actually go and look this shit up, like I did. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, yeah, that's how you get cookie headers. Um, then you can log in by having this as your thing now. Call. So we have the username, we have the password, and then we call this function that it was the fetches the CSRF token, and then this function that, that actually logs you in, um, then you get this. Like, you can see this running in org mode. By the way, this org mode, so I can just control C, control C on it, and it runs. And it tells you what the CSRF token is and what the cookie session is. Well, the session ID. Um, basically, that's how you log in into any web service within Emacs. And you can just modify this to work with whatever you want. Um, I was going to do seamless, but then it was too, like, I don't know, too expensive to, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, uh, even if, if you don't, uh, I mean, <laughs> if you don't believe me, the expensiveness does really count because when you debug this, there is no way to debug this other than actually ordering salads. <laughs> so, so I spent like four days really ordering salads just to try my thing if it worked. Whenever I did something, I was I had to validate ordering salad the next day. So it's really. 
<laughs> we can order pizza indeed. <laughs> yeah, but you know, salads are cool. Okay, now we have everything that you, we, we need, we need uh, to order salads. We can actually go and make the work for it. So with wishful programming, this is what it will, this will look like, right? So we have the CSRF token and cookie headers now. And now we are going to get all the current restaurant and things to buy. So um, I have these other functions here that I, I say call interactively with, with a reason because um, an interactive function is a function that lets you input stuff in whatever way. Are there like the username and password thing in which I was literally typing stuff or selecting something like when you select a file to open or when you're using Helm or whatever interactive thing you can also think. So I want to ask for the restaurant interactively. Then I want to, well, convert the restaurant ID to a string because, you know, types stuff. And then I want to get the product you want from the menu, like, like this. And then I also want to confirm the product. And then I want to make a pun inside the product because puns are fun. And then once I'm, I'm ready to order the product, I want actually and when I'm confirmed that I want to order a product, I want to actually order it. So this is how it should look like. Um, well, let's get to it. And then I'm just gonna sh I, I'm gonna show you like the, the small part of it. And if you want me to, I can elaborate more on that. But if you don't, then that's okay, and I can show you how it looks. Okay. So, so we're going to use Helm now. Um, who here has used Helm before? Okay, have you built your own source? No. Okay, so you're gonna love this. So, these are resources on how to write Helm extensions. Uh, actually, from Helm. This is very good to read. Uh, the other way to, to learn is just read the source code of Helm uh, sources that you really like. Um, then there is this one, which is the anatomy of, of a Helm source, which is actually made by an engineer. Uh, but still, it's really cool. Uh, it's really fun how engineers actually also love Emacs a lot. And well, this is how it's going to look. So first getting restaurants, right? So analyzing, analyzing the API from SweetGreens, you get that there is this, um, there is this thing here. OK, cool. There is this call that apparently returns restaurants, right? So what's, what is this called? Customers. OK, that's not it. <laughs> so, so apparently, uh, SweetGreen now just lets me like pick up the restaurants I've picked before. But there is this URL here, trust me, that gives you a list of restaurants, OK? So what I'm going to send here is obviously the cookie I parsed before and also the CSRF token in the headers so it lets me grab the restaurants. Um, this is how everything gets built, basically. You just send the stuff, and then you also send a zip code so you can know what restaurants are around you and send you a list of it. And then the funny thing is, like, you can see that this request will be assigned to the response, right? And then here, I assign data to re request the response data, which is a uh, function from the library request.l. From this response object, and then I have the restaurants, and then I have this map function. So uh, what this map function does, it takes all the IDs away from the restaurants. And you see this thing that was really fun to, to code, because normally, if who here have, has used Emacs Lisp to do stuff and has done many a list, and then a list inside a list becomes such a, like, a nightmare to do? Because you have to do a sock inside and a sock inside and a sock to get really nested the stuff. Okay, so the, I define this uh, accessor thing that just lets me pass uh, keys to it. So this is equivalent to just having a, a sock of data. Wait, a sock of a sock of a sock of ADSDSE of ASE and of restaurants and data or something like that. Wait. I don't know if it's right, but you get the idea. <laughs> it just it just avoids like having lots of 
complicated stuff that you don't need, uh, and in just this little thing that is very kind of like functional. And I borrow it from Clojure because Clojure has this already. It's like a, uh, it's like a proof of concept that Emacs Lisp can be fancy, just like Clojure. <laughs> you don't really need it. Maybe you need it, but yeah. I mean, this is pretty fun. It's like <coughs> kind of functional, right? But I mean, well, it does. It's not, it doesn't really mean that it's functional, but you you kind of you kind of grasp the idea. Um, I really like this. I don't know if it's really like um, you know effective or like more so like um, fast, but it's very it, it 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 raises the the quality of the code a little bit, makes it like a little bit readable. I don't know. You might judge that for yourselves. Anyway. So once you get the restaurants, uh, this is just data, right? And what you do with data, if you can show it, will you then create a Helm source for it? So this is the way you define Helm sources. I'm going to try to go to the actual function here. OK, cool. Um, this is the actual code. So here, narrow to this. OK, cool. Now, you have Helm restaurants. and I use this get restaurants that we saw before function to get uh, an A-list of restaurants. Then I will go, uh, this is the function from Helm. You define sources and you use this little function called Helm build sync source. You pass this, this is going to be the name of the source. They are going to be the candidates, which is going to be in the A-list, obviously, like this. And then you have a transformer and what is this candidate transformer? OK, so the A list looks like, I think it looks like a name and then an ID, like this. And then it has many items like this, right? But I have more, much more information about the name, like I have how far it is away from the thing. If I had ratings, I could also have that. And I want the user to know all those stuff. But I think from Helm is that when you select something, um, Helm sends that the whole string that you that you just saw literally to your process, and you don't want that because you only want the name. Um, that's what this candidate transformer does. It grabs the name and it changes like however you want it to be. You can even propertize it so it has colors or it has like an icon on it or whatever you want. And then when you select it, what will be actually sent to the process is the name and not how it looks, which is something that took me also quite a while to learn and now I'm sharing with you guys because I'm pretty sure you might, when you want to do some Helm stuff, you can refer back to this and see like, ah, that's it. So also this persisting action, I'm pretty sure you know, uh, it's like, oh wait, sorry, I shouldn't. Uh, have assumed that. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like uh, an action that doesn't execute when you click enter, but rather executes when you click tap. So it's kind of like an action for every, every, every item in the list. So for those who don't know uh, Helm, this is what kind of Helm looks like. And when you click on it, I mean, when you press enter of anything, it just goes this, for example, Helm for files. So if you press enter or something, you just go to it. But if you press uh, tap on it, it just shows it, but doesn't really like kills your Helm buffer, as you can see. So that's a persistent action, an action that just executes itself, but doesn't kill the Helm buffer. So you can still do stuff. Um, that's not it. Okay, going on. The action is actually is what actually happens when you do something on the thing. I mean, when you press enter on it. And what I want it to be is I want to set uh, uh, a variable to the candidate that was just selected. Um, yeah, and this there's just a buffer name with a heart on it because salads. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, I want to go to the org mode again. Okay, cool. Um, what am I looking at? Great, I'm here still. Um, now, finally, ordering. So that was the point in which I was going to ask you, do you want to see more of that or not? Because, or you want to rather see how it looks? Do you want to see how it looks, the thing? Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. 
So, um, like a good Emacs user, we might want to um, key bindings. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> Control Shift G. No, Control Shift Meta G. Okay, super. Control Super. Sounds good. Uh, oh, that's not it. Okay, so we're going to call this to sweet green, and then we're going to execute. I mean, evaluate this. Oh no! Start with a non prefix key. Oh yeah, <laughs> thank you. Surround so key binding. Great. Now it's evaluate it, and now when I press Control Super G. It asks me for a zip code, but I don't want that. I want to to ask me for the whole thing. So okay. So again, control the G. It asks me for my password. You can do better. Come on. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now again, the username. This is the, like the whole thing. How it goes. It asks you for the actual real password. Then it asks you for a zip code. I'm going to put the zip code where I work out. And then it tells you, okay, these are the sweet green restaurants. Which one do you want? Uh, well, the, this is what I meant by styling it and having colors and having stuff. See how Helm buffer could be, all many Helm buffers that you've seen could be greatly improved if they would put more stuff into it. <laughs> And when I click on any of this, this just like opens, uh, I mean, this just sends the name of the restaurant, nothing else. I mean, not the name, the ID of the restaurant, which is cooler. And when I press tap on it, it just opens a web page. Um, wait. Oh, wait, this is the restaurant. Huh. So uh, if I press enter on Olida, and then I say, oh, this is the thing. It has soups, it has salads, it has beverages. Just go, you can just go nuts and it has a price list. Um, if it has ratings, I would put ratings. I mean, if it was seamless, I would put ratings. But again, seamless. Um, if you like, want to see how the avocado looks, then just press tab and it opens a web page and then it tells you this is what avocado looks like. <laughs> or if you want to say like, oh, uh, guacamole green, sounds fun. Okay. Um, guacamole greens, nah, no, jam jam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to show the image inside the Helm buffer, but I, I thought that was really overkill. And um, yeah, you, you have to stop somewhere, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Otherwise, my whole uh, time in RC would have been like just doing image stuff. It's good to have self-control. Yeah, it's good to have your control. So let's order something. I really like the Hummus Tahina. Um, not vegetarian or anything, but you know, it's very good. Um, there's like, aren't you glad you use Emacs? And then it tells you, you're going to Hummus Tahina on the Dolita location, tells you the address, uh, tells you instructions, like you have to go to the station on the right, not on the left, because on the left is the physical one, on the right is when you pick up. And then it tells you the price before taxes, contains so much calories, if you're looking for that. <laughs> and then yes, and then go pick your salad. And that's how it works. That's basically how it is. You didn't just order the salad though, right? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I just stopped it before I guess like about to, or like, you know, spend $11 on a salad I won't need. <laughs> because there's so much pizza today. <laughs> That's very true, pizza. But yeah. So the actual thing looks like, um, oh yeah, of course, thanks. <laughs> oh, this was, oh, by the way, this was all in Emacs. So when I press it again, it's just an org file that has everything in it. And isn't that cool, right? Next presentation should be about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if I, this is the message part, which I should have maybe uncommented. 
but still, it was nice. So it actually also tells you how where to like check time if you want it to be. But um, yeah, you liked it anyway. So I'm not going to go further than that, unless you want it to be. So if you have any questions, just you know, this is a time if you want to know something about anything in this thing, in this realm, just go for it. Yeah. Is it like, is it oh, wait. Um, yeah, there is a thing. Um, as you can see, uh, the, it didn't ask me for my credit card information or anything. So there is this, uh, this is the payload I'm sending. I'm sending basically the time I wanted to, the basket ID when it was created, the coupon code. This uh, heads up for sweet greens. If you really want to be secure, don't send the coupon discount amount in the payload. Because anyone can send like 100 coupon discount. <laughs> and then Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like 100 coupon this instead of this, just hard code 100, and then that's it. That was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Never do that on the front end, by the way. It will be fixed once he starts using that feature. <laughs> <laughs> so what you do is you do like 25 percent, so it's like not enough for the Yeah, yeah you're computer's small. <laughs> Sometimes you eat up to like 45% just to keep on the same one. Yeah. On Christmas? No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. What salads? <laughs> Very salads. It's green, and sometimes you can have red with tahini. I don't know. <laughs> so, this is the billing part. So, I just put cash on it, and then there is Sweet Greens Rewards app. So, there is an app application which you link your, with your credit card. So, when you go pay, you go pay with your phone and then they know it's you, so that's how it works. You have to recreate an account here, then give them your credit card or whatever thing. Or you can also pay with credit card, which I didn't want to do because, you know, I don't want to, people that use this, like, hey, you stole my credit card information. It's like, no, no, I didn't. But then how can you prove it, right? You have to be safe in whatever position. Um, yeah, so people, if you really want to do anything about like internet with Emacs intercommunication, really check out the request.el package. It's very great. Um, also, if you're, if one of your questions was about like, hey, how do you, how do you make those cute lambdas appear? <laughs> or that F, or that uh, arrow, whatever. Um, sorry? The arrow was a accessor that made you go into an A-list. So if I, if I have an A-list call, let's say, um, actually, um, this is crazy, but still. So this is an A-list. I will. Um, you, Ola. That's the value of Ola. Wait, is this all right? Doesn't look all right. Um. Oh, each individual one also needs to be inside of this. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Gladly. Be me to the rescue. <laughs> anyway, so if you do this, uh, Normally you would have to do also because if you do ASOC and then you ASA and then OLA, then you get the whole A list, like ASA and the other part. So if you only want the right part, like as we are used to in dictionaries and Python or in JavaScript, then you have to do ASOC default. And then you get only the second part, right? So if, if you want to actually have this uh, ASOC default for the ASDA, that's there, but not yet quite. So if you do as of default again, and then do a, I should have really picked better names for this. <laughs> okay, now we are finally, hello, look at that code. That's beautiful. But you can do just this, and then you do hola, and then you do ASA, then ASDA, and then ASAD, or SAD ASD, and then pum, nothing. <laughs> Wait, it's actually strings. 
Is that like something that's part of? Is that something part of the image? you get that with dash that we I I so that's look at this. This is shorter and it's beautiful and it's great. And this function is some fun a function that I define myself here. It's oh, like cool. you take an A list and then you have keys and then you use reduce from this is from dash EL. So you reduce this this is a lambda thing you use. Basically you just uh, you know how reduce works, you, you take a, a, a list and then you go applying functions across the list with an initial value. So I get the A list and the list of keys. So I go consuming the list of keys and then accessing the big map with those keys and then returning the final value when I, the list is empty. Right. So that's what this does basically in one line. Um, yeah, so with that reduce function, it's very easy to just reduce <laughs> <laughs> this whole expression that was before to this, which is pretty and more readable because come on, who's who's going to read this? This is one of the reasons why Lisp wasn't that popular back in the day, I guess. So many parents, so much stuff, but this is so cool. This is easy to understand. So, yeah. So if you have seen Closure, they also have cool stuff like threading macros and, and that that execute functions to functions. And this actually also happens here in dash EL. Um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. So if you want to try it, you don't have to go outside Emacs Lisp to do stuff. <laughs> okay, cool. Any other <coughs> questions you want to have? Any? So I wonder if it is a bind given somewhere? Or yeah, it's on actually on Melpa, so you can do package install, oh, sweet ring. <laughs> and it's right there. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I think um, I discovered just today, early today, that you don't really have need to username or, or a password for any of the things just to check out. I mean, just you need just a username and a password just to do the checkout part, not really grab the restaurants or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that was I that I discovered today. Yeah. I was like, yeah. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but still, uh, you can just put any username or password. Then it will still grab the restaurants and everything. If you want to just see how it looks and try it, it will do everything up to the point of checking out, because then it will fail. But then you know, you don't have to create a username or password to see to see how these things works. If you want it for educational purposes. That's why it's online or on the line. Um, my so hub is set Diego, so if you want to check it, it's here. And there is also a, a GIF showing how it works. Basically, the same thing I show here. Um, <coughs> yeah, there's instructions, you know, build with space marks. Have I told you I love space marks? <laughs> cool. It's very cool. Oh, this is where you pick up times, and then you continue or not, and then it just tells you to enjoy your salad. Yep. So, any other questions? I'm going to stick around for a little while, so just, like. Well, I'll continue asking questions. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about the space bank, because I've heard much of it, but I don't really know it. Can you talk about it a little bit? Yeah, sure. So, you know how people say that you said legend, but you know, people say that Beam and Emacs users don't get along well. Like, you know, there is some kind of rivalry. It's not true, right? It's just a myth. Of course not. <laughs> so, um, SpaceMax kernel tries to get the most out of, of, of both, <coughs> kind of like having um, the best of both worlds. So, when you're using Vim and you have a space leader and you have all these many things that you can do whatever with it. Um, let's say, it's, uh, also SpaceMax brings this uh, whole set of bindings that are kind of default. For example, everything that is always on applications is always a space A. Everything that is has regard to project is a space P. Everything regarding layout is a space L. And then you have also a microstate. And so it brings much of the customization that you might have uh, to stumble upon before having a, a great setup out of the way, but it still lets you customize a lot 
out of it if you read how it works. I wouldn't really recommend it to like new new people to Emacs because it takes away the Emacs experience from them. But when I tried Space Mask, I was already like uh, half year in in Emacs and I had my own configuration and everything. And every time I wanted to change something, it was like so painful to like when I changed something, something else broke, and then it was like, what is this? I don't. I, that's was kind of frustrating. But then Space Mask is configured out of the box for most stuff. So you don't have to struggle with it. You either choose it, and then when something doesn't work, just fix one little thing because you know you're capable of that, and then you're happy. But a new user is be like, Emacs or Space Mugs, whatever. They just the same thing. They, they don't know any of them, so it's like they don't really appreciate it. But if you're an Emacs user that has used it for like quite a while, then you will appreciate the pain that is taken away from you. So, yeah, Space Mugs is mostly that. It's a set of configuration already out of the box. It manages itself by layers. For example, if you want a Python layer, uh, this is it. And it has, it's community maintained, so people that also use Python like maintain this, and then they have the best packages, the best configuration they can think of. And yeah, it has a great documentation for it. Like um, The REPL integration is great. So if I do something like, uh, this was a, a heap sort of implementation I was, I was checking out. Like, if I want to try this on a REPL, I don't have to, like, a Vim user would. <laughs> spawn a terminal and then, like, do my Python. What is this? I uh, just do, like, oh, I want to send this whole buffer to the terminal or to IPython. Okay, comma, send, buffer. What? IPython? Yes. Thank you. It's right here. And then you have max heap here, and it's a class. And you have A, okay, it was max heap. And then I just push one. A dot, oh, what, completion? <laughs> You're kidding me? Okay, data, or array, I don't want, oh, tell dot array. And then you can access everything inside it, so that's cool. And also, uh, when you get error messages, let me see if I can pop this. Wait. Okay, I guess I handled that error. Um, I wanted I wanted to like on purpose have an error, but whatever. Oh, um, give it a number. Okay, a dot push. Um, a number will work. Uh, oh, I know. Uh, a pen. Uh, zero. Zero. Okay, cool. So you have an error. It's like oh, I don't know what to do now. Oh well, just copy the error and paste it on Stack Overflow, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or just like copy this error and then there is also this search engine application thing so space a search engine select and then you do a stack overflow and then it just sends it to stack overflow by itself so that's like space max has many configuration built by like there that I just there waiting for you to try that every every other package new package or whatever that you might think of if someone has an interest in it and it's in space max mostly I mean, most probably it's already there. Like at least I check like Melpa new packages every week or so, and if it's something really cool, I just add it. <laughs> like, and I have many contrib contrib contribution layers because of that. Just adding stuff that nobody really needs. <laughs> um, so let me see what I have here. Did you know there is a Nyan cat? This Nyanka, like <laughs> this is actually pretty genius. It's like song. This is song. I, I feel I'm like just like showing stuff. I don't like it. <laughs> Are you, you like it? <laughs> okay, cool. So this is song. Yeah. Song kind of like moves your stuff around. Okay, yeah. and just screen text. Screen what? Screensaver for Emacs. Yeah, it's a screensaver for Emacs, and it just like moves text around. Okay, but you can also. Uh, bind images to text, okay? And you know Emacs can also render XPM, uh, XBM images. So uh, what this Nyankat mode does is just, it binds XPM images into text and then uses the song thing to just move the text around. It looks like an animation in real, it's like, <laughs> it's like, was Wasamaza did this and it's really impressive. I still don't understand this enough. But then, you know, it's like, I had to stop somewhere along the Emacs path, so I didn't like, really do this. 
I, I guess the <coughs> thing is, is that I suppose we should just do more questions about uh, sweet greens, and then we can talk about space max and other, and other stuff after. But we have to probably cut it off at some point. Great. Cool. Any other questions about uh, sweet green? No ordering the request at EL. Cool. Thanks, cool. Diego. <laughs> Thanks for having me.